Hello and welcome. My name is Dylan and today we're going to be talking about repair parts and also how to repair your items in New World. So basically there was an update here. So if we look on the middle of the screen down at the very bottom, you're going to see that there is a character there. Now the character has some red pieces and one pair of, of white pants. Now what does that actually mean? So if we go through here and we press, press tab to bring up our inventory and our armor here, we're going to see that this icon here is a little bit better vision. And here it also includes the jewelry. Now the jewelry is also white and the pants are white. But if we look here, the jewelry is not, there is no durability damage to the jewelry. So if we look down at the very bottom of the card of an item, while we hover over it, we'll see that the durability is 625 out of 625. Now that is the same for all of these. They are maximum durability. They have slightly more durability, but they are all completely full and they're white on this diagram. So why are the pants then white? So what happens essentially is there is an, a warning indicator that your items are very damaged and will shortly break. So essentially it will pop up on your screen while you're playing the game, just like any of the other notifications will, like you're abandoning an event or, um, you know, an outpost rush queue, anything like that. Um, so it will just pop up on your screen and say an item has been heavily damaged and needs repair. So if we go back to our character menu here, which by simply just pressing tab, then we'll see that all of these items are very damaged and they do need repair but there is a certain threshold where it will give you the warning and be like, hey, you should check your items. They do need repair just to give you a heads up. Now, if you do want to repair an item, you can simply click on the item itself and you can go to repair here. And if you hover over it, it will tell you the value that it will take. So uh, 18.45 coins and 17 repair parts. You can also click into this here and it will come up uh, a little bit easier to read right here. You can also just hold R and click on an item. So if we go back and I hold R and click on this helmet, it will bring up this menu here. And then you can simply click on the item or you can simply go control R and then just click on the item itself and it will completely repair that item, but it won't tell you how much it will take to repair. And you can simply go through and click on a few items very quickly by using holding control and R, and you could click on a few items and repair them. The other option would be to go down here to this yellow section here and click repair all. Now, if you click on the repair all section, then it goes through and tells you how many coins and how many repair parts it will take to repair all of your items. Now with the repair all option, it will repair everything that has any kind of durability damage. So if the white bar just simply appears, like for example, this pickaxe has a super high durability, but if I clicked repair all, then it would still go ahead and repair this pickaxe, even though it's barely been damaged at all. So if we go through here and we look at this weapon here, we can see that it is fully broken and being fully broken, it has an X over the icon here itself and on the little card that pops up and it is flashing red to tell me that it is fully broken. Now we can see that a lot of stuff is, you know, in red text here. Whereas if we look at this um, sword that's fully, um, that has full durability up at the top, we'll see that all of the text is either blue or white. But if we look back at this one, there is no blue text and there is a lot of red text. So essentially, if we look at the very top there, it says equipped slash broken bonuses disabled. You don't get any blocking stability for this. Your damage is reduced a little bit. Your attributes no longer work. Your gem socket, so whatever your gem does for the particular weapon or piece of armor will no longer work. Um, and your perks will no longer give you any benefit. So I would no longer receive the, um, the plus 2% of luck, 2.2%. I would no longer receive that. And the same thing for the mending execution, that would no longer work. You do not lose the item itself. The item is not permanently damaged. Nothing crazy happens. It doesn't cost you more money um, if you let a weapon get completely broken. But all you would do is you can simply go through and repair it or you could use a repair kit and repair that item. 
So we will talk about repair parts in just a second here. But if you click repair all, obviously it's going to use a large chunk of coins and repair parts. Now, the higher level of the gear that you have usually means higher durability. And it also just means it costs more. So for example, this full set of void bent armor will cost me a lot more than if I just had some random um, armor that was like tier three or something like that, that I was trying to use. This will cost me more to repair because it is tier five armor. And the same thing goes for your weapons and your tools, all of that stuff. Now there is obviously no durability for your ammunition or any of your different consumables that you have oops over in this slots over here there is no durability for those and also your bags have no durability either you cannot damage your bags now an interesting case here is your um, your amulet your ring and your earring you don't lose durability on these items by being hit but you do lose durability on these items by dying so if you die with these items either in your inventory over here, or if you die with these items equipped, then you will lose a certain amount of durability, but you don't lose durability by going out and getting hit, as is evidenced by the fact that all of my armor is severely damaged here, but the durability on my jewelry is still perfect because I haven't died, but I have taken a lot of hits or a lot of damage. So how do repair parts work? What happens when you reach the limit of repair parts and how can you go through and farm repair parts quickly? Well, there's two ways that you can go through and farm repair parts pretty quickly. The first way that you could do that is simply by leveling up your different skills. So if we go over here to the trade skills section. So if we look at our skills here, if you're doing skills like jewelry crafting, engineering, armoring and weapon smithing to level these up you have to make a ton of different items that you have literally no use for in most cases now there are some things that you can use to level up in engineering or jewelry crafting or armoring for example which you would then try to sell but for most cases you're simply going to go through and create a bunch of items and then you're simply going to go through and scrap those items or salvage them. So if you are leveling up any of these skills, you're going to get a ton of repair parts from that. Now, how do you farm repair parts without leveling up your skills? So essentially, you need to get items. So you're going to need weapons and armor throughout the world. The best way to get that is to go through and kill enemies and loot chests in the different landmarks throughout the world. If you have discovered the landmarks, it will show different little icons here explaining what they are. Or if you haven't, then it will show a question mark here. Now, obviously, the different tiers of the items that you get are going to be based on the zones that you are in. It shows you on the map here right underneath the name of each of the different territories it shows you the recommended levels for those territories if you're trying to get the higher level items so tier fours and tier fives obviously you have to go to the higher level zones and that will reward you with more repair parts per item but it will be harder to clear those zones solo and some of the landmarks may be super difficult to kill a bunch of the enemies by yourself so if you're, you know, level 40 or under, I would say just do these lower level zones. You can go through very easily and sometimes even one hit the uh, enemies that you'll encounter within these zones. And you can go through and loot a bunch of the chests and go to the different areas. Um, and if you're 60 and above, then I would recommend doing something like Ebonscale Reach or Morningdale. Those zones will give you tier four or tier five items. You can get tier fives in Evanscale, but you'll get tier fives in or tier fours in Morningdale. And you can go through and solo most of the, uh, the different landmarks and stuff in this area by yourself. Obviously, the alternative to that is to do something like a world tour or to get a group of people and go to farm the high level elite zones in these unclaimed sections that will get you you know the most benefit i would say but you can you can't obviously do that solo so you would either have to join a giant group of people and go around and loot a bunch of chests in all of these areas or you would have to get a group together and do that as well but if you are solo then the best way would be to pick the zone like i mentioned that's best for you but within the zone you can actually go through and get some value out of it as well so what you would do is you would go ahead and grab faction quests here so if i open up the faction board you would grab some faction quests here just the pve ones not the pvp ones and then you would go down here over to the 
to the town board for the specific town and you would pick up these quests as well. Now these are explorers needed quests which essentially means you go to an area and you loot chests. It is available for each of these three sections, the upgrade town, the upgrade fort, and whatever perk for the town. Um, it's currently not available for my town, but it will show up in the third slot here, and you can go through and select these missions. Then your goal would be to go through and try to group up these missions as best as you can. So you can see that I have three missions over here, but I have the one town board mission over here on the left. I would simply go through, I would loot all of these chests and kill all the enemies in this area here, complete these three faction missions. Then I would either recall back to Windsward, I could run back to because it's not that far, or I could recall back to my house, house or inn. And then I would re-roll my faction quests and try to get them in this area over here. If I do, then I would do those and do this town board mission as well. If not, then I would try to re-roll the town board mission to try to get it in an area closer to wherever my faction quests are and go through and do a bunch of those, clearing the landmarks and stuff. You can, if let's say, if, for example, if I got faction quests or uh, town board missions over here, I could clear some of these landmarks on the way to it as well. And every chest that you loot has a chance to give you refining reagents, which obviously it's better to get the higher tier refining reagents. So that would be why I would personally go to Morningdale and get at least the greens or Ebon Scale and get some blues as well. But you get refining reagents and you get luck rolls, like essentially rolls at the chests at getting like trophy things and stuff like that, that sell for a ton of money. You could go through and do some corruption portals as well, although unless you're, you have a tank in your group, they are a little bit annoying. If you have a tank that can go through and pull aggro, then the other people can go through to the different events and they can complete the objective, so use their... Um, their staff, their Azoth staff, and close the portals and things like that. Um, but I wouldn't recommend that. If you were going to do that or find a group, I would recommend that you just do elite zones instead because um, you get more of a benefit out of that unless you're going to try to close the 55 and 65 portals. But you would likely want a massive group for that. Now, if we go back to our inventory here and we look at all of these different items that I have, I can show you guys and give you examples that the different tiers of items that you either craft or just go out and collect in the world, those will give you different amounts of repair parts and they will give you a little bit of coins as well. So if I just hold S, we'll be able to see how much each of these will cost. So let's go for salvaging just this level two, uh, tier two rapier. So we'll click on it and we'll see that it will reward us with one repair part and 25 cents. So essentially one fourth of a gold coin. Now, if I were to go to a tier three rapier, now it will give us three repair parts and 50 cents. Now, if I go to a tier four, I do have a rapier. Okay, tier four rapier. And we click on it, it will give us six repair parts and 1.5 gold coins. Now, it should quickly be noted that items that you create yourself through crafting and leveling up your skills, those items will not reward you with coins. So if I hold S and click on it, we'll see that it will actually reward us with ingots and, and the repair parts, but no gold. Now, it should be noted that all of the different values and everything seem to be different for all of the different weapon types. Like, for example, if we look at this tier four rapier again, we click salvage. See, we can see that we're going to get six repair parts and 1.5 gold coins. But if we go over here and look at this fire staff and click salvage, even though it is an epic, we click on it and it says only three repair parts, but 1.5 um, gold coins. Now, what happens when you hit 2000 repair parts? So let's just go through here and we will quick salvage. So to quick salvage, you would simply press control on your keyboard and S at the same time. Doing that won't show you how many repair parts you will get for an item or any of the things that you'll get for salvaging them, but it will allow you to just one click with your mouse. So we'll one click on this right here and it is gone. I salvaged it and I got the reward. So if we look down at the bottom, we'll see that my gold ends with 89 and we will see that my repair parts ends with 66. So if I click that, we can see that I got a few repair parts and I also got a little bit of gold there. Now you can simply just hold again, control plus 
uh, or control and S and doing that will show you on your cursor that it says quick salvage and you can just spam through and salvage these items very, very quickly. And you can go through and do that even faster. If you just sit here and just click very quickly, you can dismantle a bunch of items really, really fast. So once you've gone through and looted a bunch of chests, completed your uh, faction quests that you're going for, plus the explorers needed quests from the town board, you can simply just spam through all of the different things in your inventory that you don't want. Um, obviously for some people, it might be worth it to go slower if you're still leveling up and there's a chance that you can get good items from the world. Now, if we go through here and just click S again, and I click on any of these items, we'll see that this screen comes up and it is red here, giving me the warning that um, you are at your repair parts limit. Salvaging this item will, will return zero repair parts. Now it does give you this warning, but you will still receive whatever gold you would have received. So if you don't care about the repair parts, you don't wanna make repair kits, then that's fine. You hit your max, you wanna stay at your max. You're just gonna salvage things whenever you'll still receive the gold or if it's something that you created yourself, you will still receive a small portion of the resources back. Now, if you do have 2000 repair parts, what can you actually do with them? How do you use them? Now we'll see that I'm currently at the outfitting station and for these, these different levels in armoring, so 15, 65, 115, and 165 in armoring, I can make these different tiers of repair kits. Now, if you click into the repair kit itself and you read the section here, it will say what type of repair kit it is and that it fully repairs any item of a certain tier. So if I were to click on the standard one, then it repairs, fully repairs any item of tier two. Now, if I just go through and click on a random uh, mod here, which they did recently make a change so that you can use very crappy mods so mods that are super easy to get that you're going to find hundreds of so i have a bunch of the master repair kits here but i'm going to go through and make one of these standard ones here just to show you guys something in a second but if we go through here and we go back to the repair kit section and you can see that the standard repair kit only requires one mod now if i were to go down it requires two mods down again three mods and down again, still three mods, just more repair parts. So you can see that it cost me double the repair parts from the expert repair kit to the master repair kit. So it's 300 repair parts to make one of these kits. Now, quickly, I should state that if we go over here to another station, if we go over here to the forge, and we'll just type in the search bar here, we'll just type in the repair, right? We can see here that you can also make repair kits over here using your weapon smithing skill. And you can see here using your engineering skill that you can go through and create these different things. Although it should be noted here that you do to make the higher level kits, you will need both the level required in this specific skill. So in this case, engineering, and you will also need the workshop to be at the specific tier required to make that kit. So if it's a tier five kit, you will need a tier five workshop. And if it's a tier four kit, tier four workshop, etc. Now this crafting tax over here is the only spot where repair kits are going to cost you coins. So if we look over here, it's gonna cost us about 22 cents and that takes into account my territory reduction that I have for my um, my territory standing in Windsward. But it will also take into account, if we look at the map here, it will also take into account the taxes for the actual town itself. Now this does not count as refining, it counts as a crafting fee. So if you wanted to spend as little as possible on your repair kits, you would go through and you would look for a town with the lowest crafting lowest crafting fee. Now, if you look here, the cheaper ones cost basically nothing and they do increase significantly for the higher ones here. And it will cost you around 50 cents if you want to make the max one for me in this town with my reduction and also the current taxes of the town. But... It's overall not that much, maybe one to two gold if things were outrageous and you had no reductions. All right, so if we look in our inventory here, we have the two repair kits. So this one is a tier two repair kit and these ones are tier five repair kits. Now it should be noted that these repair kits basically don't weigh anything after a recent update. So you can carry, this is 41 repair kits and it only costs 4.1 um pounds so you could carry a bunch of repair kits if you wanted each of them weighs 0 0.1 pounds 
So how do you actually use a repair kit? It is super simple. You would take the repair kit and you simply click on it and hold and you would drag it to whatever item you wanted to repair. Now it obviously should be noted that the tier of the item that you're trying to repair, it requires that tier of repair kit to actually be able to repair it. So if I go through here and I tried to repair this tier five sword with this tier two repair kit, I drag it over and put it on and you'll see the message that comes up there cannot repair. It requires a tier five repair kit. Now, if I were to take this tier five repair kit and try to put it on this tier four item, then it will actually let me use it. So I could use a higher level repair kit to repair a lower tier item if I wanted to, although obviously that is a waste of repair parts. Now, if I take it and drag it on a tier five, then you can see that I can use this repair kit. And if we look at our gold down at the bottom here, it is 216886. So if we click on this, we can see that my gold has not changed at all. My repair kits have not changed at all, but I have confirmed that I did want to use a repair kit there and it did go through and fully repair my weapon. Now, it will. It, I could also use it on a weapon that's basically full. So this one here is basically full, but if I take the repair kit and put it on it, it will allow me to use the repair kit, even though if we look at the white bar here and we look at the durability down at the bottom, this thing has barely been used at all, but it will still waste the repair kit if I click on it and click confirm. So just be aware of that. But if I go through and click on an item like a weapon, so this is only a tier four weapon, so it's not gonna cost as much as say a fully broken tier five weapon, but let me click into it, click repair, and we'll see that this one here would cost me 50 coins to fully repair this item. So you could look at each one of these as being you know, a certain value of coin that you could save by making each of these repair kits, which will cost you nothing if you're going through and playing the game and getting repair cart parts and stuff anyways. So you can go through and save a ton of money using these repair kits. I hope this video helped. If it did, consider checking out the playlist linked on screen now or in the description down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a great day, everybody.